Aloha everybody, this is Tiggy Maximus with Tiggy Maximus Talks, episode 46 on YouTube. Um, happy Rabbit New Year, uh, Lunar New Year just started for 2023, I just found out that Rabbit and Cat are pretty much sharing the same uh, Lunar New Year. I guess it depends how you look at the calendar, depending on if you follow, you know, I always say Lunar New Year, or you can say Chinese New Year, but I always tend to, to go towards um, uh, the rabbit, and I suppose the rabbit is part of the Lunar New Year, so, but the cat thing, cat and rabbit, that's kind of an interesting combo for one year, but Hey, you know what? You could always, I don't know, you could pair animals every year. So let's do 24 animals, right? Anywho, uh, hopefully the year of the rabbit is going to be good for me. Um, we'll see what happens with that. More comedy shows, more sports. Hopefully my teams win championships. So the future is bright. Um... So, I just want to get on here pretty quickly, uh, try to remember as much as I can. Um, round two of the NFL playoffs, uh, a lot of good football. The top seeded Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, who were the number four seed, who you might remember made the miraculous comeback against my Chargers coming down from 27-0 and came back to win 31-30. And they would have had a chance against the Kansas City Chiefs because uh, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback of the Chiefs, got hurt. And it was kind of painful to watch him play, hopping around on one foot, trying to throw passes, making plays. I mean, give the guy a lot of credit for willing this team to victory, but... I don't think he's going to be ready with a high ankle sprain come Sunday for the uh, AFC Championship against the Cincinnati Bengals. So since the Chiefs beat the Jaguars 27-20, the uh, Cincinnati Bengals went to Buffalo and beat the Buffalo Bills um, impressively 27-10. It was snowing in Buffalo. I'm just wowed by the fact Joe Burrow was able to just play like normal and he blew out the Buffalo Bills. It was actually a big shocker he won by that much, but I had a feeling the Bengals would win just a lot closer. But 27-10 as opposed to 27-24. Well, Bengals, I think, with the fact that Patrick Mahomes is hurt, um, I would say the Cincinnati Bengals three seed will defeat the number one seed. Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City to win the AFC Championship and punch their ticket to the Super Bowl. Number 57. On the other side, um, I did get to watch the uh, Eagles and Giants playoff game. Top seeded Eagles beat the six seeded New York Giants 38 7. I got to watch the game over at Pitcher's Bar in Richmond Mosquitoes. Great bar, great um, wait staff, ownership. Um, great food, good drinks, great location. And uh, when I was there, they actually had to show the football game on most of the TVs. But that left, they actually left me with one TV to watch the UFC fights. And it's a good thing because the playoff game would have ended around eight something, and the UFC fights would have uh, started at seven. But by that time, since it was a blowout, most people were probably were gonna either leave. And then whoever wanted to watch the fights would more likely come in and take um, the chairs and stuff. It was a cold night, actually. Um, but yeah, once the game was pretty much already... Uh, um, the game was already out of reach. It was no longer, no longer competitive. Eagles dominated and made sure they made a big statement. And... Um, they get to face the 49ers. The two seed 49ers hosted the five seed uh, Dallas Cowboys in San Francisco. Good close game. 49ers pulled it out 19 to 12. 
good victory for the 49ers. And um, between the two, I think I'm going to be picking the 49ers to beat the Eagles. Ideally, I kind of wanted Eagles and Bengals, but I have a feeling that the, the final is going to be 49ers and Bengals. And honestly, I think I want to see the Bengals beat the 49ers for their first championship. And uh, I like Tigers. So, um, so yeah, so there's that, and, uh, um, a little more on sports here, uh, Lakers did, uh, win against the, uh, Memphis Grizzlies, it was a good close game, beaten by one, I think it was like 122, 121 or something. And then the Lakers went to Portland and beat the Blazers 121-112. So right now the Lakers are 21 and 25. They're sitting in 12th place in the Western Conference um, of the NBA, and they're only one game out of the playing tournament that was implemented two years ago. And this is the third year they're going to do it. And the Lakers are um, trying to get into the playoffs and they just traded for a big man Achimura from the Wizards the Washington Wizards and in doing so the Lakers gave up Kendrick Nunn and three second round picks um so hopefully that's their big man insurance if Anthony Davis goes out again but um Lakers are trying to make some kind of push even though they may not win the championship this year but at least they're going to try to make it interesting and competitive for the fans and uh not try to tank so we'll see what happens lakers let's ride um la kings uh they beat the blackhawks chicago blackhawks yesterday in chicago and um uh kings are doing pretty well staying on top of the uh, pacific division they're in i guess you could say the top three so they're in a good position with the Edmonton Oilers and the Golden Knights of Vegas so um, going forward I think those three teams will do pretty well um, uh, hmm. you know I, I'm trying to think if the Dallas Stars are part of the Western or the Pacific Division too because they're doing pretty well too so uh, so yeah and then the uh, hello you know let's get into the UFC fights so I mentioned before I was watching the uh, fights over at pitchers and at the same time they had the Eagles and Giants game on but if we're talking about UFC 283 um, I came in around 5.15, got a table, it was a packed house because everybody wanted to watch football and there was a lot of things going on. Uh, so I, I, the fight, the first fight I remember watching was um, Costa versus Moses and Moses was able to submit uh, Costa, um, I think it was a rear naked choke um, from what I can remember. Um, good victory for Moses that was in the prelims and the featured prelim fight was Shogun Rua his retirement fight um, last fight of his career uh, he's going to hang it up no matter what and this was actually in Brazil so perfect end into his career and um, but given how old and how long Shogun Rua is um, Shogun Rua did lose to Potiera who was the favorite going in. Potiera was able to get the TKO on Shogun Rua, and that was the end of Shogun Rua's career. Longer career, though. Uh, he peaked when he was the light heavyweight champion of the UFC um, and uh, has some great wars with Dan Henderson and Lyoto Machida. But the moment that he lost the, the light heavyweight championship to Bones Jones... Um, I felt that Jogan Rua wasn't really the same and he never really got to the top of the mountain um, ever again and he started to kind of decline gradually every year so he just wasn't the same fighter anymore and honestly I'm glad that he hung up his gloves 
So great career. Kudos to Shogun Rua for uh, decades of fights and entertaining the crowds and putting his heart out there. So can't wait to see Shogun Rua in the Hall of Fame of the UFC. Uh, getting into the main card now. Um, first fight of the UFC uh, 283. Um, uh, listen with the lights. Okay. Um, Paul Craig had fought Johnny Walker. That was the first fight to open the main card. Um, Johnny Walker is good with the stand up. And Paul Craig is known for being a submission specialist. So, as you would imagine, Paul Craig was trying to take down Johnny Walker. But quick thinking from Johnny Walker, and he was able to back fist quite a few times into the face of Paul Craig. And Paul Craig eventually had to let go, and he couldn't really defend his face from the back fist. And Johnny Walker was able to get the TKO victory over Paul Craig in the first round. But uh, it's a good thing that Paul Craig um, tried to, you know, go to his strengths and try to take down Johnny Walker as soon as possible. He would have if it wasn't for Johnny Walker's quick thinking because if Johnny Walker was not thinking quickly, uh, Johnny Walker probably would have been taken down and that's where Paul Craig will excel at and probably would have tapped out Johnny Walker. So kudos for Johnny Walker for thinking quickly and just you know utilizing that small opportunity window to make sure that he doesn't fall to the ground and get submitted so you know if your opponent is going to use both hands to grab you you most likely will know that he's not protecting his face while doing so so quick thinking great job by johnny walker uh, next up we have lauren murphy and jessica andraj fight was kind of lopsided um, just kind of Andrade just pounded away, um, outclassed Lauren Murphy for three rounds. So decision victory for Jessica Andrade. Next up we have Gilbert Burns. He submitted uh, Neil Magny, I believe, wrestled him, and I believe he got the rear naked choke on uh, Neil Magny. So uh, Gilbert Burns looked pretty good. Um, and the fact that Burns looks much bigger than Neil Magny. And then uh, we have our co-main event. Um, co-main event uh, is for the Flyweight Championship. This is the fourth time Brandon Moreno and Davison Figueroa Figueredo was going to fight each other. And um, all their fights are all wars. Um, unfortunately, this fight ended to an eye injury. Um... Figueredo, Figueredo suffered a cut underneath his right eye. Um, there's a little controversy about it because Brandon Moreno did throw a punch um, close to the right eye of uh, Figueredo. However, there may or may not have been a scratch from the thumbnail of Moreno because the glove, the hand, was covering the right eye of Figueredo. And honestly, to see him pull away, Moreno pulling away from Figueredo, I can't help but think that he caught some of his skin with his fingernail. And you could see that Figueredo had grabbed his right eye, thinking it was an eye poke, but I think that was a scratch. And it opened up um, that swelling, and it made a big cut under his right eye. But... If you look at the pictures of his other fights with Moreno, you would see that it was not as bad, yet Moreno threw a lot more punches in those fights, and that cut did not appear on the right eye. Um, but this one, whether or not it was a clean punch or not, but can't help, but there's a little bit of a controversy, but hey, at least for the time being, the four-fight rivalry between Moreno and Figueredo is over for now. And I heard that Figueredo is going to be moving up to 135. And, um, you know, kudos 
wish the guy luck. Um, can't keep fighting the same guy forever. And then Brandon Moreno will be fighting Pantoja, apparently. A guy who actually beat him before. So that should be a fun fight. And the fact that Moreno will probably stay at 125. Uh, and then we got our main event. Oh, by the way, Moreno, as he was leaving the octagon, he there was a lot of crap being thrown his way. Um, mostly beer bottles and alcohol. And they were not too happy. The Brazilian fans were not too happy with Moreno, quite possibly because um, the way that fight ended was not to their liking. Whether or not it was a controversy or not, thumb or punch, uh, that's kind of unfortunate. That wasn't the first time I've seen people throw stuff into the octagon, plus things at the fighters. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, not only was it the uh, Jeremy Stevens and Yair Rodriguez fight, but it was also the Habib uh, Habib Connor McGregor fight. So, yeah. Um, anywho, now we get to our main event. It is for the light heavyweight championship. Um, Glover Teixeira, former title holder, going up against, uh, I think it was like number seven, number eight. Contender, uh, John Maha Hill. Uh, it was a good fight. Glover got a couple of takedowns in the fight. He was very tough. Not could not have been put away. There were some chances Jamal uh, John Maha could have done, but I have a feeling that John Maha Hill needs to work on some either jujitsu or grappling because he could have done some damage with Glover to share down there. But that is. Glover's um, one of his fortes too so um, but uh, overall Jamaha Hill um, just kept doing leg kicks did head kicks punches to the body head strikes did a lot of stuff in the fight um, was able to get out of um, some uh, uh, get, was able to get off the ground after being taken down by Glover a couple of times, so uh, a lot of kudos to John Mahal Hill for weathering the storm and clean sweeps across the board. I think it was almost all 50 44, I guess it was. So, a uh, great victory, and um, things looking bright for John Maha Hill as your new light heavyweight champion. Can't wait for uh, John Maha Hill to fight Jury. Um, that's going to be a good matchup. Also, a match with Jan Bohodovic and uh, even a greater matchup with Ankalev. So, the next uh, two years of light heavyweight fights for the championship is going to look pretty good. Um, pretty much gaining. Uh, um, fun again um, and uh, creating that excitement back again since the days of Bones Jones when he was the light heavyweight champion so speaking of which guess what so Cyril Gann and John Bones Jones will be fighting for the UFC heavyweight championship at um, what is it UFC 285 March 4th in Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena. And if you're wondering why they're fighting for the heavyweight championship, is because former uh, UFC heavyweight champion um, Francis Nagani was actually stripped of his heavyweight championship because he was able to get um, his release from the UFC and his contract, and um, he's going to fight somewhere else. Or quite quite possibly uh, had the freedom to fight anywhere else and for uh, quite possibly a lot more money so um, kudos to uh, uh, Francis Nagano wish wish the guy a lot of luck maybe he'll get to box Tyson Fury or do a lot of those uh, two part fights where you box one and then you do MMA in the other so uh, can't wait to see that. 
But going back to uh, uh, Gon and Bones Jones, that should be a good fight. I like how both fighters are pretty similar. They're very mobile. They use their kicks. They use the elbows. Um, and I would say um, taking quite a few punches from both of these guys. It's kind of scary thinking about it. But um, if they were to fight each other, I got to say I am leaning towards Ciro Gon winning by decision over Bones Jones. So, um, so on that, I just want to talk about, um, I will see, uh, the Tet Festival, um, I went to the one in East San Diego, it was a smaller venue than what I'm used to, um, I'm used to bigger venues like the Mary Mason Rec Center when they host the TED Festival, which I am going to uh, this weekend. Um, and of course, both festivals are free. Uh, so the one in East San Diego this past weekend, um, good food. I got to try out the uh, tapioca dumplings from this one Vietnamese vendor. Good stuff. Um, it was like a 8.5 out of 10. Um, gossip. I also got to try Say Sate, a new Thai vendor. Never seen them before. Um, I tried their Thai drunken noodle spaghetti um, with chicken satay. Pretty good stuff. Um, 8.8 out of 10. I also got to try um, the Ube cheesecake that was uh, from All Things Ube. So. I saw them before at the Foodie Land Del Mar. Uh, can't wait for that one, actually. But yeah, the Ube Cheesecake, I think it was a 8.1 8 out of 10. Um, if you got the little spoon given to you, uh, you would probably need to use a little pressure to get to the crust, because if you don't, all you're going to get is the Ube. Uh, but yeah, overall, good stuff. Uh, got to see the... Um, um, the, what we call it the lucky tree with all the envelopes and, uh, and you write stuff you know either you can put money in it or write the messages inside the envelope for like wishing good luck for you know prosperity good health and stuff for the rest of the year for your loved ones and friends and um, you know anything really um and of course, it's the year of the rabbit, so uh, a lot of great decorations there. Got to see a big dragon. I did somehow miss the lion, dra uh, lion dance, dragon dance. Um, I usually always find those very entertaining. Hopefully, I see that this coming weekend at the Mermaid Salon. So, um, just so you know, parking was a little hard, so you kind of need to park in the residentials if you wanted to park your car and start walking to the festival. So, so yeah, had a good time with family and I can't wait for the one in Mira Mesa. So let's see what happens with that. Um, and uh, I want to finish by talking about a comedy show. Uh, I went to um, downtown above Ash Social. Uh, it's on top of the Carte Hotel. Uh, the show is hosted by Cash Combi, who you might know as Cash Habib. And uh, it actually started to rain, so we had to move the show from the rooftop patio of Above Ash Social. Um, and it was moved down to the uh, Carte Cellars on the first floor. So, kudos for Cash, uh, fast thinking, got the show up and running. People didn't want to go home. They want they were there for a good show, and uh, the show was headlined by Louis Santani. I've seen him before. I saw him at the La Jolla Comedy Store, um, open mic, and uh, quite possibly I might have seen him before that too. But I really remembered him from the 
the my um, the comedy store. So this was a full set. Uh, I believe he went 45 minutes. So uh, good stuff, uh, good material, a lot of great laughs from the crowd and myself. Um, I would say Luis Santani was a 8.4 out of 10. Um, I got to talk to the guy before and after the show, so he was pretty awesome. Um, I also got to see Brandon J. This is the first time I got to see him. Um, uh, great material. He did some impressions. Uh, he did an impression of Matthew McConaughey. Very funny. Uh, I thought his material was like a 8.3 out of 10, so good stuff. Can't wait to see more of his stuff later on. Um, there was also my first um, not first time. I got to see Sapna Iyer. So she's a doctor at Kaiser Permanente. And um, the reason why I say it, it's not actually the first time I've seen her. I actually saw her on open mic at the mic drop. So the stuff that she said was exactly how I remembered it. And then it rang a bell in my mind that, oh wait, it's the same doctor again. So uh, she's making her way around San Diego. So uh, she's getting her feet wet. I thought her material was uh, 8.0 out of 10. She has this funny bit where she says um, that she wanted to get, you know, kind of get away from the whole medical field of being a doctor so that uh, she doesn't have to listen to people's problems, um, penis problems, people's problems in life. Um, uh, I guess politics and people's attitudes and stuff like that so that she can do better hours in comedy because you know they talk about people's problems, politics, dick problems, sex life problems so uh, it was really funny. Uh, I like seeing uh, how she's going to turn out. Um, maybe she'll come up with some new material next time I see her. But yeah, she seems pretty nice. Got to talk to her for a little bit and introduce myself. And um, um, let's see what happens next. And uh, let's see. Oh, the one before that. Um, Ryan Archuleta. This is, actually, this is actually the second time I've seen him, actually. I saw him at the boxing club before. Um, downtown uh, back in June so um, great guy got to talk to him too really busy um, he did have a joke about um, an illness that comes from fighting in the uh, um, like the war and apparently he made a joke about the illness is that he's afraid of Vietnamese people. So I'm Vietnamese. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I wasn't really offended by the joke or any way, shape or form, actually. You know, because you got to find laughter in almost everything, right? So, and I'm pretty sure they worked hard on the jokes. And, uh, you know, Ryan Archuleta is a funny guy. Um... He didn't get like super a lot of laughs for like maybe some of his jokes and um, I actually thought his material was probably a 7.9 out of 10 um, but you know I, I can't wait to see more of him uh, down the road see what other jokes he got going on he did try another joke that was kind of new where he said uh, if you watch Um, too much of the news and you're a Democrat he might think that you're going to be pregnant <laughs> so um, I mean the joke probably needs maybe fine tuning or something um, so yeah and then uh, Kesha Beep did some stand up usual stuff Cash was about maybe a 7.5 out of 10 since it wasn't really new stuff, so I'm kind of anticipating new stuff later on. But overall, kudos to the guy for um, 
thinking quickly, getting the show up and running. And, um, you know, rain or shine, cash comedy shows will not be canceled. The show must go on uh, reasonably. All right, guys, um, I am exhausted. Gonna get some dinner. Um, it's great talking to all you guys. So, yeah, um, have fun this coming weekend. If you're going to the Tet Festival, celebrate more of the Rabbit New Year. Watch some more football. There's only three games left, the AFC Championship, the NFC Championship, and the Super Bowl. And um, have fun. Go see comedy shows. Go to museums, see artwork, museums, uh, great amusement parks. Watch basketball, sports. Have a good time with everybody. So this is Tiki Maximus signing off, and uh, talk to you guys all later. Bye.